Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with The Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to build tendon strength. A lot of you guys are strength and conditioning professionals, personal trainers, or just familiar with working out already and know how to build up a bicep muscle with muscle protein synthesis. But what you might not know as much about is how to build tendon strength. Here's how this video will break down. First, we'll explore the science of tendon adaptation and collagen synthesis. Then we'll discuss specific exercises like isometrics, eccentrics, or heavy slow resistance exercises to maximize tendon and ligament strength. Finally, we'll wrap up with specific exercises and sets and reps that you need to build strong tendons. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Let's start with some fascinating research. I want you guys to check out this image of a patellar tendon of an NBA athlete. I want you to specifically look at the white spot on image A. That is tendinopathy, or an area of damaged tendon. Believe it or not, the rehab world for years thought that it was actually impossible to heal that area of damaged tendon. They thought that it lacked blood flow and just wouldn't heal, and instead that you just had to build strong tendon around the area of damaged tendon. But as you can see from image B and C, in this case, the tendon actually did heal. In this case, this occurred over the course of 18 months. And you can see that over that 18 months, as that white spot disappeared, it was replaced with strong new tendon. And here's another view of that tendon building up over time. A shows that weak, small tendon, and then 18 months later, you can see a much thicker and stronger tendon. Now, you're probably wondering two things though. One, what did they do to cause this to heal and build into a stronger tendon? And two, can you do it faster than 18 months? And I'll actually start with that second question. The process of healing and rebuilding a tendon from damaged to much stronger often does occur much faster. For example, here it occurred with an Olympian in less than two months. It's not quite as easy to see as the first example, but this does show the tendon remodeling from the damaged area in the middle on the image on the left to a significantly stronger remodeled tendon on the right. All this to say, you can heal your tendon and you can do so fairly quickly if you do the right training. Okay, so now let's answer the most important question that you have. What type of training do you need to do so that way you can build strong tendons like this? Because tendon pain is frustrating and it's obviously much better to just have strong tendons. Well, after helping hundreds of people build stronger tendons, I can tell you that there are three things that you need to get right to actually build strong tendons. And those are time, tension, and volume. And once you see the science of how this works, you'll understand how to get all three of those right and you'll know exactly how to build strong tendons anywhere in your body. Okay, so let's break it down. Your tendon looks something like this. You have a muscle here, you have some area of healthy tendon, and then you have some area of damaged tendon. Whenever you do very fast movements, like jumping or sprinting, your tendon has to lengthen very quickly. Now, this area of damaged tendon doesn't want to lengthen quickly and get injured, so there's actually a sort of stress shielding protective mechanism going on here. That's just a fancy way of saying your tendon basically protects the area of damage as much as it can. But if the stress is too high, you'll probably still end up irritating that area of damaged tendon. And you may have felt this for yourself if you've ever dealt with jumper's knee and you did a one leg jump or a landing and you felt that pain. The bottom line is though, fast movements like jumping don't heal your tendon. And if anything, they just kind of irritate the area of damage. So we wouldn't expect to see tendon remodeling like we saw in the images earlier from doing plyometrics. But there is a different type of exercise that can rebuild tendon. And it's actually the one that they used to rebuild the NBA athlete's tendon that we saw before. And that type of exercise is an isometric, meaning an exercise that involves holding a static muscle contraction. For example, a split squat isometric, a leg press isometric, or a leg extension isometric, holding a muscle contraction and holding it in place. And here's why it works. During an isometric muscle contraction, you're slowly shortening the muscle and your tendon is slowly relaxing and lengthening. This is called stress relaxation. And it's a unique stimulus to this area of damaged tendon. In fact, it's one of the only ways to actually stimulate this area of damaged tendon to rebuild into a stronger tendon. Because to go from a weak and damaged tendon to a strong tendon, we need those three things, time, 
tension and volume. So let's address each one. First is time. We need a muscle contraction that lasts long enough that the muscle can slowly shorten and the tendon can slowly lengthen. It seems like from the research that the sweet spot here is around 30 seconds. That allows the tendon to reduce tension by about 45% giving that stress relaxation response. And remember that stress relaxation or that tendon slowly lengthening is what helps rebuild and reform collagen. But importantly, we can't just hold a weak isometric contraction for 30 seconds, barely trying and expect our tendon to actually get stronger. This is what a lot of people do and it doesn't work. So now let's address point two, which is tension. And if there are any engineers watching, I think you'll get this right away. Basically, there needs to be enough tension through the tendon to stimulate that tendon to actually get stronger. A weak contraction just isn't going to be enough of a stimulus to cause the tissue to need to remodel or get stronger. Very similarly, if you lift really light weights, you wouldn't expect to see your muscle remodel or get stronger. Now, how much tension though is enough specifically for building the tendon. Across many studies, it seems like this loading threshold is around 70% of maximum force output. And that's actually pretty challenging. Whenever I actually measured this in the gym with force plates, it took some athletes 40 to 50 pound dumbbells for split squats or up to 200 plus pounds for a calf raise hold to hit that 70% of maximum force output. Now you may need to build up to this if you're starting at square one, but a lot of people who have been battling tendon pain for years just haven't actually done challenging enough isometrics to make their tendon stronger. The bottom line is this, the loading threshold needs to be reached to build stronger tendons. Okay, so far we've said that you need to hold isometrics for long enough, around 30 seconds, and that you also need enough weight for it to be challenging, around 70% of maximum. But there is one more thing that you need to get right, and that is volume. So how many sets of these 30 second challenging isometrics should you do and how often? And here's what I've seen in the research and what I've done with my clients. You have to consider the individual response. Specifically, your pain should return to baseline within 24 hours. Because the truth is it's common for there to be some pain if you have weak or damaged tendons and you're doing these challenging exercises. In fact, strengthening your tendons can happen faster if you push to about a four out of 10 pain level rather than a zero out of 10 pain level. But that said, it's important that your pain returns to baseline after 24 hours. We don't wanna see your pain getting worse. Overall though, I recommend anywhere from three to six sets of challenging 30 second isometrics and potentially two to three different exercises. For example, you might do three sets of a leg extension isometric and four sets of a split squat isometric. Now, if you're just maintaining or prehabbing, then you probably only need to pick one exercise, three sets of 30 seconds, and that will be enough. But if you're working through patellar tendinopathy or Achilles tendinopathy that has been persistent for months, then you may need to work up to four to six sets of two to three different exercises and be really consistent with that for several months. In either case though, I recommend training either three days per week or every other day. So that way you give yourself 48 hours between each training session since net positive collagen synthesis typically occurs around 36 hours. And this principle is very similar to how we would build muscle strength by pushing hard and then taking a rest day. Now this is a good time to mention, although we have been talking about how this primarily applies to the patellar tendon, this same principle can be used to build tendon strength in any area of your body. If you've irritated your bicep tendon bench pressing, you can do isometric bench press or an isometric front raise to build up that bicep tendon. If you've irritated your Achilles tendon running hills, then you can do isometric calf raises with a barbell on your shoulders to deliver that high force through the calf and build a stronger Achilles tendon. You can use long lever bridge holds or even a Nordic hamstring curl position hold to build hamstring tendons. You could use hangboard holds to build finger and wrist tendons for rock climbing. And you can use wrist extension or wrist supination isometric exercises to build up the lateral elbow for tennis. So as you can see, now that you know the principle and the science, you can apply this to really any area in the body. 
Okay, but there are two more important things that I wanna cover. One is that I wanna mention that heavy, slow loading, for example, going through a full range of motion split squat or a calf raise can build tendon strength as well. I typically still recommend starting with the isometric approach in most cases, but I do like choosing those heavy, slow, controlled exercises through full range of motion. For example, for an off-season athlete who needs to build both tendon and muscle strength. And if you do want to do slow, controlled movements instead of isometrics, the protocol would be almost identical. Just for the three sets of 30 seconds, instead of holding, for example, a split squat in mid-range, the athlete would slowly raise and lower, keeping tension the whole time. Just make sure that you're still loading heavy enough to move the needle on building that tendon up. Okay, now there is one more thing that I wanna address because I always get questions on this from athletes that I'm consulting and in the comments of videos like this. And that is about nutrition or supplementation. In the examples of the tendon rebuilding that I showed earlier, the athletes were supplementing collagen in the form of gelatin 30 to 60 minutes prior to performing the isometrics. I think that this can actually make a small to moderate difference for you if you're trying to maximize your tendon strength gains. The study I mentioned recommends specifically 15 grams of gelatin with 225 milligrams of vitamin C. And you can go get that from anywhere, but to make this easy for you so you don't have to do the research on that yourself, I did look up some examples that are popular and well-rated on Amazon for collagen or gelatin supplements. And either of these could provide that 15 grams. And then for vitamin C, it's really cheap and easy. You can just get something like this. Note though, this is not nutrition advice. Consult with your doctor before taking any supplements. I'm just sharing the protocol that was used in the research that we reviewed today, and you can do with that what you'd like. As someone who's had tendon pain myself and worked with a lot of athletes with tendon pain who have been frustrated by protocols that didn't work, I really hope that this video is helpful for you and points you in the right direction, because if you get just a few things right, building tendon strength is simple and very effective. If you learned something today and you appreciate that, feel free to smash that like button, subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and drop a comment below if you do have any questions, and I'll try to point you in the right direction. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.